Welcome to Horsemanship Theory, Unit 3, English Saddles and Accessories. Our English saddles originated basically from the sport of fox hunting back in uh, England. Uh, the hunt seat saddle is made with a more forward balance seat when compared to a western saddle. It has a knee roll to help position the leg specifically for jump, jumping and stirrup irons that can be raised or lowered depending on the style of the rider. Uh, the hunt seat saddle, as well as all English saddles, provide a closer contact uh, from horse and rider as compared to Western saddles. The hunt seat saddle originally was pur purposes for lower level dressage, hunter pleasure, and jumping. As with our Western saddles, the tree is the framework of the hunt of the hunt seat saddle and traditionally our English saddle trees are made with a spring frame and the spring frame is simply a strip of flexible metal that is on the un underside of the uh, saddle tree and this strip of metal helps absorb the shock of the horse's motion. The tree is traditionally made with a wool or a wood type frame uh, with a metal plate on the front uh, or top side of the saddle. The stirrup bars are actually connected to the wooden tree of the saddle. Some of our newer, uh, newer trees are also made with a fiberglass material. And uh, one, uh, some of the uh, positives of a fiberglass tree are they're lightweight and they won't warp as wood will over time. If you look at the parts of the tree then, we have the palmel or the uh, front side of the tree, which uh, is connected by the bars to the cantle or the back uh, side of the tree. From an overview of the tree then, or of the English saddle, we have again the palmel and the cantle from front to rear, and then we have the panel. And the panel is, uh, if you look underneath the saddle, is basically on two sides of the center of the saddle. The panel is filled uh, with foam. In the olden days, it was filled with wool. And you'll also see some uh, more modern saddles where they can actually fill up these panels with air. But the panel is what provides the cushion and comfort for both horse and rider. The gullet or the uh, channel rides right uh, is right in between the uh, two panels of the saddle and uh, the gullet and the pommel should never touch the back of the horse so that the horse has freedom uh, from the saddle. If we look at a more detailed diagram then the pommel of the saddle should be higher than the seat of the saddle. Uh, the skirt of the saddle actually protects the rider's thighs from the stirrup bar which lays directly underneath but is easily accessible by the rider to adjust their stirrups and in fact in an English saddle it's very easy to adjust your, your stirrups while mounted on your horse. Uh, the knee rolls of your English saddles are going to vary according to the purpose and the rider preference of the saddle. Uh, the stirrup leathers uh, run into the stirrup irons. The girth connects the saddle to the horse's back and is synonymous to the cinch of the western saddle. The saddle flap then uh, separates a uh, horse uh, uh, from the rider. And then we have the uh, leather keepers as well. If we lift up the saddle flap as well as the saddle skirt, we'll see the stirrup bar. The stirrup bar in an English saddle can either be kept in the up position to keep the stirrup leather secure on the saddle, or you can actually turn this keeper down so that if there's extreme pressure put on the stirrup leathers, the leathers will easily uh, fall off of the stirrup. So this is really important with our beginner intermediate riders. If they were to fall off but have kept their foot in the stirrup, the stirrup leather would then easily be released. Some of your more advanced riders that are riding uh, over high fences may actually prefer to keep this keeper up because if you get to a, um, 
a very rough uh, ride over a fence, you may actually put a lot of pressure in one or the other strips. And the last thing you want at that point in time is for the strip to come off. You'll see three billet straps, but most of our English girths only have uh, two uh, buckles to uh, girth up to the horse. So you actually have one extra billet strap um, in case one of your billet stra straps were to break uh, during a ride. Uh, usually when you're girthing up a um, English uh, saddle, you'll use the first and the third billet straps on either side to girth up your horse. There's different types of hunt seat saddles, so we'll talk about uh, the all-purpose saddle first. And the all-purpose saddle does just that. It allows the rider to ride comfortab comfortably over flat or over fences. So it's quite often used in events uh, like eventing, where you have both the cross-country portion and the dressage portion, as well as trail and endurance rides. It provides the rider with a deep seat being higher at the pommel and the cantle, and also provides security for the rider's leg with a um, knee roll, and the saddle flaps are relatively long and set forward. The close contact saddle is actually for more experienced riders, and it has a lower pommel, lower cantle, and a more flat seat, so that the rider has a lot more freedom of movement to get up and over the horse into a jumping or two-point position, uh, but a little less security than the deeper seat of the all-purpose saddle provides. It has minimal padding in the knee rolls, again, allowing for the horse and rider to have more of a close contact. This saddle is actually ideal for uh, experienced riders jumping over fences or riders that are riding in um, hunt seat equitation. The jumping saddle is uh, more similar to the original saddles that were used in fox hunting. And today jump saddles are used uh, for um, show jumping, uh, equitation over fences, as well as fox hunting and your cross country events. The jumping saddle has, again, a flatter seat, a lower pommel and cantle, similar to your close contact, but the uh, leg, um, the stirrup flap, or the uh, saddle flaps are gonna be more forward, and these uh, knee rolls will be more supportive than your close contact saddle. The stirrup bars are also set, uh, set forward along the uh, saddle, and usually when you're riding in a jumping saddle, you're riding with very short stirrups to really give you that secure leg as you ride over fences. The dressage saddle, as opposed to uh, your hot seat saddles, is really designed for riding a horse only on the flat, not over fences. It's a very balanced saddle. It keeps the rider over the center of the horse's gravity and it's also a close contact saddle. It has a deep seat uh, with a higher cantle, and it has slight knee rolls to help secure the rider's uh, leg position. It has straighter uh, flaps uh, on either side of the horse and allows the rider to ride with a longer leg on the horse. The cutback or saddle seat saddle is for the uh, really elegant uh, gated show horse. You'll also see this saddle used in the show arena with your Arabians and your Morgans. Really any horse that uh, can uh, be ridden in a very upright frame uh, with a lot of action in front. The cutback saddle is a very insecure saddle. And if you'll notice, it has a very uh, low pommel and cantle, very flat um, seat, and virtually no knee rolls at all, just uh, the saddle flap on either side of the horse. Um, this saddle places the rider uh, a little more behind the horse's center of gravity, allowing that horse to really elevate uh, in front. The saddle seat saddle is not meant for long rides. It does not provide 
either the cushion or the comfort as the uh, hunt seat or the dressage saddle would. So it's really used uh, mainly for training horses for the show arena and then showing them. The girths of the English saddle are primarily made of leather uh, with elastic on the um, left, for the left side of the horse. You'll also see some synthetic girths made out of a ne neoprene material. Uh, as with any girth, you want to check them over after every ride, ensuring that the buckles are uh, securely stitched on uh, to the leather portion of the girth and that the elastic has no tears uh, in it. Um, and you want to clean these girths after every ride with just a nice damp rag. The pads of the English saddle are really determined by uh, the type of saddle that you're riding in as well as the event that you're riding in. So your traditional hunt seat pads are shaped like the hunt seat saddle itself. Uh, deer hide is actually uh, the most plush um, uh, material that you can use in a saddle pad, but it's also extremely expensive. Another good pad would be your fleece pads that provide a lot of cushion uh, for the horse as well as wicking away uh, moisture from the horse. Um, after that, you'll have uh, cotton pads uh, that are used quite often. Um, and then some orthopedic pads that may be filled with gel to help horses uh, with sore backs. If you're riding dressage or eventing, you'll see a lot of square pads in use there. And in the cross country events or eventing, you'll see um, some really colorful pads used, which is simply just along with the style of that type of uh, discipline. With any pad, you wanna keep it clean and dry and you wanna check for uniformity, especially if you're using an orthopedic pad uh, to make sure that a place hasn't gotten worn and is putting undue pressure on the horse's back. English saddles can be ridden with breastplates and you'll often see breastplates on horses in, uh, in uh, fox hunting or uh, in stadium jumping. And especially, if, again, if you have horses with straight shoulders, low withers, or round backs, a breast plate will help secure that saddle on the horse. If you're um, riding, you need to make sure that you take care of your tack. Uh, every day you should wipe off the sweat and dirt after every ride with a damp ride rag before you put your saddle away. You want to clean your saddle, deep clean your saddle, according to how often you use it. So if you're using the saddle on a weekly basis, you should clean it about twice a year. If you're using your saddle on a daily basis, you should actually clean it um, every three months. So to deep clean a saddle, you detach the girths and the stirrup. You can remove the dirt with a dry cloth, and then you can apply soap either in the form of glycerin bar or saddle soap product uh, with a damp sponge sparingly over every part of the saddle. You want to rinse and remove the soap with a warm uh, water uh, with a soft rag. You can also use a stiff brush to raise the nap of the suede along the knee rolls. Never dry the saddle in direct heat as that might cause the leather to crack. Once the saddle is thoroughly dried, apply a saddle conditioner or thin coat of neat's foot oil very sparingly with a soft rag. Wait about an hour and then remove the residue with a dry soft rag. So some tools that you'll need for cleaning your tack are a sponge, rag, stiff brush, toothbrush, and Q-tips. Finally, when your uh, tack should be stored in a climate-controlled room free of rodents. The tack should be kept off the ground at all times. Uh, English saddles should be stored with the stirrup irons ran up the leathers the girths completely unbuckled from the saddle and put between the uh, stirrups of the saddle so that it's stored in a position that it's going to be when you're riding the horse. The blankets and pads should be kept clean and dry and again it's best if they're stored uh, in the same type of position they would be laying if they were on the horse's back. You want to hang your bridles in the shape that they would be uh, ridden in 
Uh, so make sure that there's no twist in the leather or that they're not hanging in an awkward angle. And with that, that completes unit three.